morning everyone uh, it's 11 o'clock now I wanted to go ahead and get started to uh, respect your time and thank you everybody for uh, taking your time out of your your day to uh, go through this webinar with me with an introduction to Azure Container Services I'm Blaze Stewart I'm a senior consultant at Wintelect and uh, we have a number of seminars that we're doing on container related technologies this is the second one in our series on container related technologies and we're focusing on Azure Container Services today uh, we've already done one on an introduction to Docker, so you can go out to winelect.com and look at that if you want to review that one. We just covered Docker specifically. Today we're going to be looking at Azure Container Services. We're going to touch on Docker and we're going to touch on DCOS, which are all a part of Azure Container Services. So let's go ahead and uh, get started on this. Our um, upcoming schedule for these uh, upcoming webinars on December 8th is when we'll do a the third one in the series, it's Container Services on Server uh, 2016. If you haven't uh, been paying attention to when did the Windows environment as of late, you know one of the most uh, one of the newest features, most anticipated features on Server 2016 is the containers that you can run native Windows containers on Server 2016, and you can also run Hyper-V containers on that. And we're going to look at that uh, in depth on December 8th so you can go ahead and register for that webinar as well and this one we're going to be looking at the Azure side of things and that one we're going to look at the Windows Server side of things so hopefully we can round out this series on container, techno container technology in the uh, Microsoft space. So what are we going to look at today? We're going to look at Azure Container Services on Azure so do that you need a subscription to Azure. If you don't have one, you can go out to azure.microsoft.com and punch in that URL there and sign up for one for free and then you'll get $200 in credit on Azure. And anything that we're doing today, you should be able to do with that $200 credit and you can spin up any of the Azure container services or other uh, Azure components and then test them to your liking. So that's just a resource Microsoft offers for free uh, for you to try do a trial on. If you have a MSDN subscription, you usually get a subscription related to Azure as well with that. So it'll work as well. I'm going to be using my Azure subscription related to my MSDN account for my demos today. So what are, let's go ahead and get started and talk about Azure Container Services and what it's trying to solve. Azure Container Services, uh, as it relates to the actual container space is a containers as a service service uh, that is from Microsoft as part of platform as a service. So the, the containers as a services is intended to provide an environment to run containers in without actually having to build that platform and maintain it yourself. So all the user has to do is go out there, provision the container as a service environment, and then not necessarily forget about it, but be aware of what it's doing. But you don't have to get in the weeds of trying to configure and maintain that. All you have to do is focus in on the actual containers that you're running in that environment. And Microsoft is usually going to take care of all of the other details for you. And there's also some other advantages to that. Um, and we're going to talk about later on, but here's a few examples of those. If you're interested in containers as a service and you want to check some other ones out, our Azure Container Services being one from Microsoft, you have uh, Amazon EC2 Container Services, and then you also have containers on Google's Compute Engine. And there's other offerings out there. These are some of the major ones. Uh, in my experience, I've looked at uh, Amazon EC2 Container Services, Azure Container Services, and some of the ones that are from uh, smaller providers. I will say that Azure Container Services, in my in my opinion, are one of the best implementations of this simply because it has a tighter integration with Docker. And we're going to look at that a little bit today. Uh, while Amazon Container Services has a more tighter integration with the Amazon Web Services side of things, Microsoft chose to do a tighter integration with, with Docker. And so you end up being, you can use the Docker tools that you're familiar with on Azure Container Services, while EC2 Container Services, you have to use Amazon's tools for that. So that's a little bit of a difference, but I, I do prefer Azure Container Services myself. So what are Azure Container Services trying to do? They're an, Azure Container Services are built on an easy to, to install, best practice, scalable approach for deploying containers on a cloud provider. And let me unpack that a little bit. What I mean by easy to install is, is this is, you can go from zero to, uh, to a, a production ready environment in as little as 10 minutes with Azure Container Services because 
they they do all the legwork of, uh, of spinning up the environment, provisioning it, and then getting all the uh, the Docker engine installed on that or DCOS installed on that. And then you can go about deploying your containers to it without a whole lot of headaches. And by, I mean, by pre- best practices, we're talking about all the best practices that are prescribed by whatever container orchestration engine that you might be using. So um, if you're using Docker Swarm, Docker puts out best practices on how to use deploy that on uh, an environment and Microsoft worked closely with Docker to make sure that whatever uh, is deployed on Azure Container Service is is a best practice approach according to Docker and the same thing with DCOS when they worked with uh, Mesosphere to deploy DCOS on to Azure Container Services and you can choose one or the other and we're going to look at how to do that later on but these are best practices approach so they 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 you can they can be used according to the documentation for whatever platform, and you don't have to worry about any of syncrasies. It's a fairly standard-based approach as well. Scalable, the, the scalable approach for deploying container services is because these are scalable architectures, Docker and DCOS. What Docker and uh, the Docker implementation does and the DCOS implementation does is using Azure Container Services um, command line through Azure, you can scale up or scale down. And then what that will do, it will communicate with DCOS or Docker to provision the environment to add additional uh, agent nodes. We'll look at the architecture of these in a minute and you'll understand what I'm talking about, but you can scale these up and scale these down. Uh, and so this gives you the ability to do that rather rather easily without having to monkey around with either DCOS or Docker to do that. So it is scalable, it's best practice, it is easy to use. Likewise, um, it uses Docker Swarm and DCOS, which we've talked about, and uh, we're going to look at these in detail, and Docker Swarm being from uh, Docker itself and, and DCOS being uh, from Mesosphere. It's built on Apache Mesos, though, and then uh, uses uh, Marathon as orchestration engine, and we're going to look at those components as we get more into the weeds on this. And l- what I do like about Azure Container Services, as opposed to trying to build this out yourself, is Azure Container Services has integration with Azure APIs, ARM templates, and the Azure CLI. So if you were to go about building this yourself in Azure, like for instance, you wanted to build a VM and then build your own instance of uh, Docker or DCOS on Azure, you could do that, but you wouldn't have the advantage of taking of using the Azure APIs to scale it, or you wouldn't have the the, the the convenience of using ARM templates, and you wouldn't have the convenience of using the Azure CLI to do that. So with the Azure CLI, you can provision and manage the environment, then you can use the, the on the tools, you can, from DCOS and the tools from Docker, you can manage the, the, the Docker, uh, you can manage the actual engines that you're running there. So that's kind of what we're getting at with the, the two sides of this. So with the Azure uh, tools, you manage the, the environment that the, the Azure components and what have you. Then you use the actual native tools from DCOS, which comes with its own CLI and Docker CLI to manage uh, the the Docker engine that or the Docker container engine that you're actually running on whatever orchestration engine that you're using. So that's the advantages of Azure Container Services over doing it yourself. So let's go ahead and start talking about these uh, various d- uh, container engines that are available in Azure Container Services. I want to first talk about Docker Swarm because it's probably going to be the most popular one that people use and for a lot of reasons, but we're not going to leave out DCOS just because it is available there and it does have some advantages over Docker Swarm depending on what your context is. So here are the, the components of Docker Swarm. You need the Docker client, which is uh, the agent that runs on your local machine that will connect to the Docker Swarm Manager. And the Docker Swarm Manager is uh, what is commanded by the Docker client, which actually manages all of the nodes that you're running on your Docker Swarm. So what you have is a kind of a master slave or a manager node type configuration with a Docker Swarm. So the, the, the agent itself uh, is separate from the, the 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 manager agent is separate from the actual worker agents and the, but it does the the issue the commands to each one of the nodes but the the thing about Docker Swarm is it actually exposes the same 
uh, familiar API that you would otherwise get with a single instance of Docker. So anything that you can do on a single instance of Docker running on a single box, you can do it with Docker Swarm on a clustered environment. And this gives you the ability to manage that cluster in a, in a reasonable fashion. And then, of course, you have the access to Docker Hub that you can uh, push containers to and then pull containers from as well. So on Azure, that's this looks something like this. You have uh, the the Azure components on the, for Swarm. You have the the internet here, and these all come into two different sides of the uh, environment. You have the master load balancer, and you uh, then you have the master agent, and that's on one subnet. And this is all running on an Azure private network in on the cloud. And so you have a master load balancer and a master agent. You might actually have a like one, three, or five of these, depending on what options you choose. And we'll look at how to do that when we deploy this. And this connects over to the agent uh, the agent side. So the orchestration is going from the master agent over to the uh, to a VM scale set on Azure. And these VM scale sets are, are what is actually running the Docker engine and each one of those nodes. And then the Azure load balancer uh, then is aware of that. And so it's actually doing load balancing across all of those agent nodes so whenever you deploy an application or a container to that, it's uh, the agent load balancer is going to be more aware of what's going on inside of this VM scale set here so that you, when you expose the port, it knows where to send it as well because it's sending a probe. It's probing these uh, the scale set for open ports that, that you tell it to whenever you configure that load balancer in Azure. And uh, you don't really have to worry about managing, uh, doing anything on the manage uh, master load balancer here. You do have to, if you expose anything other than port 80, port 8080, or port 443, you have to uh, go into uh, the, the portal, or you can do it from the Azure command line to configure the agent load balancer to, to manage this uh, VM scale set on Azure. To, so you have to set those probes up so the application will be exposed. But with this architecture, these are the, the components that actually support what's actually running on top of it, which is uh, the uh, Docker Swarm components. So that's the, the Azure components for, for running Swarm. Let's switch over and talk a little bit about uh, DCOS, which is a, it has a similar architecture to Swarm, where you have um, a master and then you have your agents. The difference here is that you have a DCOS by default exposes a public and private network or subnet so you have uh, worker nodes running on this public uh, side, and then you have some in the back side running on this private subnet. So this adds some additional complexity to the environment. And, uh, and so you can get a very similar setup, but the only difference with the components on the Azure side is um, that it's going to add a different VM scale set for both of these this public and private subnet. So under the hood, though, DCOS is actually running Docker uh, swarm, but it's using a different orchestration engine on the, the front end so that you can actually uh, manage it using DCOS. Now, DCOS is a lot bigger than Docker. Uh, it's just uh, DCOS implementation on Azure Container Services is focused on containers. However, DCOS is much bigger than that. It actually stands for Data Center Operating System, and it's, it's intended to be almost a full uh, scale um, management platform for clustered uh, for clustered infrastructure that you can deploy a, more than just uh, uh, containers on. You can do all kinds of orchestration with it. So it's intended to abstract away having to manage all of the various nodes on a clustered environment. But rather, uh, you so when you deploy an application, you shouldn't have to know what, anything about necessarily know anything about the underlying infrastructure you just use the DCO, dcos tools to do that with so it does provide a lot more than containers but we're our, for our, our our intents and purposes today we're going to focus in on what it does for containers on azure container services because dcos is really a bigger product it's it's got a lot a lot of uh, functionality that 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 we're not even going to uh, bother with we're not even, hardly even going to scratch the surface on it really so what's it look like in Azure? It's got a very similar architecture on Azure that we've seen with uh, Do uh, Docker Swarm, where we had the master load balancer and the master agents running here, and you had this VM scale set for the public side. It just adds a VM scale set for the private side of things, which doesn't have a load balancer, a public load balancer. Rather, uh, the uh, the master agent connects to that uh that, that private subnet, so does the, uh, the the public side. So you could employ some of your edge 
uh, applications here, and then you might want to put your database services and other things in the back end on this private subnet and just have those connected that way. Now in Swarm, you can do similar schemes with this, but it would be managed within the Docker Swarm environment. So you can set up networks within Swarm and to do all this. Um, uh, that's a little bit more advanced than what we're going to be doing today, but uh, DCOS out of the box configures it this way uh, in order to have uh, a private kind of a DMZ, if you will, and then a backend um, private uh, network. And you can kind of emulate this in Docker Swarm, but we're not going to do that uh, for our intents and purposes today. But I just want to make you aware of that it is possible to kind of mimic this out in uh, Docker Swarm. So how do you know when to choose Docker Swarm and how, did, how do you choose uh, DCOS? This is a this is not an easy easy decision to make. The, the the there's a lot of factors that go into deciding whether to use DCOS or Docker uh, Swarm uh, on Azure Container Services. Uh, regardless of uh, which one you choose, ultimately you're going to be using Docker containers. Uh, Docker containers um, as kind of the de facto standard in on all things containers nowadays. And there's other container formats out there, but Docker containers run on virtually every container as a service platform that you can go out there and sign up for. And Azure Container Services is no different there. The The difference between this is is uh, what tool set do you want to use and scale of, of what you're trying to do. Now, if you're familiar with Docker and you're you're very fam and you like you know, Docker, the Docker environment, which I do like the Docker environment, it's kind of my preferred environment for deploying any, any kind of application in a containerized environment. Um, the using uh, Swarm is going to be very familiar, and you can use all the, the same tools that, like you would use in your local uh, development environment uh, to deploy uh, applications to Docker on uh, Azure Container Services. So, for instance, if you like Swarm, uh, I'm sorry, you like Docker Compose for doing orchestration, you can go out, you can run your, your Docker Compose uh, scripts to deploy an application from your local dev or de local QA environment to your Docker environment on Azure Container Services, and it'll, it'll work exactly the same way as it did in dev and QA and product in production on Azure Container Services, which is one of the main reasons I like to use uh, the, the Swarm environment over other ones because it does have consistency across everything from dev to production. However, that's uh, it doesn't uh, Swarm in and of itself doesn't really do a whole lot for you whenever you get a lot of containers running on an environment because uh, Swarm is uh, more of a middle, a small to middle size uh, orchestration engine. It can do a, a, a large set of containers. However, it doesn't, it makes it a little bit unwieldy when you start to try and manage a lot of containers using Docker Swarm because it doesn't provide a whole, whole lot of tools for doing that. It gives you the tools you need to get it up and running, but as far as monitoring or, or, or any kind of metrics or analytics or anything like that, there, there, there isn't really a lot of stuff built into Swarm that gives you a lot of that visibility into it. Uh, there are third-party tools that do, and some from Microsoft and some from something like New Relic or uh, Dynatrace or something like that. You can install into your containers and get, get the same kind of metrics back. But if you don't want to really mess around with that, uh, a DCOS might be a good option. DCOS is, is out of the box designed to run large de large scale deployments of containers through multiplicity. So if if you're really going for a large scale deployment of containers, by, by large scale, I'm talking in the hundreds to thousands of containers, DCOS might be a really good option for that because it really does give you a lot of visibility into the environment and uh, through the dashboard and through the, uh, the back end systems and uh, provides the tooling for doing that. So it's really designed for large scale applications, not like a onesie twosie or even a, you know, if, you know, if you're just running a dozen or half dozen containers, Docker Swarm might be a better uh, option if you're running a small set, a smaller set of uh, containers. So that's kind of the, 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 some of the considerations when you're choosing one of these. But if you just want kind of a, a rule of thumb, start with, start with Docker Swarm. And if you outgrow it, you can go to DCOS. So that's kind of the uh, the rule I would give if you're actually thinking about which one do I use. Uh, I would say just start with Docker Swarm, and if you're just kicking the tires on it, familiarize yourself with it, and then uh, scale up to DCOS if you get to the point where you're actually using lots of containers, and then learn how to use DCOS.
So let's uh, talk about deploying this. Now we've seen kind of the, the theory behind this. We're going to look at uh, deploying uh, Azure Container Services, and we're going to jump right into a demo after this. Azure Container Services can be deployed through the portal uh, or through the Azure uh, CLI or through API. So a Azure provides uh, multiple ways to do this. Um, the ways we're going to look at are really going to be using the portal and the Azure CLI uh, not the APIs. I'm not going to get into the APIs. Just you can, you can. The reason they provide the APIs is if you want to write third-party modules uh, for Azure, or if you want to write some kind of, you know, scripting for this that is uh, through web services or something like that that you want to use. And that's what the APIs are for. That's a little bit more out of the scope of what we're trying to accomplish today. But they are available. We're going to look at how to uh, look at the portal, and then we're going to look at the Azure CLI, because I think for most people, this is probably going to be sufficient to deploy uh, the container uh, Azure Container Services, because it does, gives you some really nice tooling for this, as well as the ability to use Azure Resource Manager, which uh, is uh, uh, schema that you can deploy to uh, deploy container services with and so once you have those up and running uh, those deployed you can actually i'm sorry you once you have azure resource manager templates defined you can use the azure cli to quickly deploy azure resource manager templates to azure and it will deploy the it'll spin that up so this is also scriptable as well so let's flip over and do a demo here um let me get out of uh, powerpoint here and I want to look at the portal first. So I'm going to launch uh, a browser here and go to portal.azure.com and I'm going to log into my account here. Now I'm going to be using my MSDN account for this. Now the Azure portal looks like this. I already have a, a few container services defined in my portal here. And the reason why is I wanted to have these um, available already deployed simply because it does take a minute and I didn't want to sit there and have to wait for these to deploy, uh, to be de defined as we go through this demo. I am going to deploy one but uh, and show you that it does actually deploy but I already have these up and running. So I have DCOS, a DCOS instance of Azure Container Services and I have a Swarm instance already running. So to add an instance to the portal you just simply uh, go to uh, the, the plus here and the, in this blade you would go down to containers and select Azure Container Services. Notice these other ones are available here. DCOS on Azure is not the same thing as Azure Container Services running uh, DCOS. So the Azure Container Services, like I said, has integration with APIs and the CLI. This is just going to spin up Azure DCOS on a virtual machine without that, without that add, added functionality. And then Docker on Ubuntu is uh, is not the same thing as Azure Container Services running Docker either. It's just going to take a, a Ubuntu virtual machine and then add Docker to it without the Azure CLIs. So we're going to select this one here. And uh, if we would get, were to click Create, you would go through this uh, wizard here. Now, with this setup, what you need is you need to, to provide it with a... a um, username and then you're also going to need a public key now under the hood uh, azure container services is going to configure a, a linux virtual machine for the uh, for the master and to log into that you're going to need an ssh client so you can have to have an ssh key it uses a public private key pair and asymmetric uh, key encryption to uh, provide a secure uh, connection to Azure Container Services. So to do this, simply what you'd want to use is you'd want to use either PuTTY Gen on a uh, Windows PC, or you could use uh, SSH Key Gen on a, a Mac or Linux box. And if you want to look that up, it's simple. Just Google SSH Key Gen, uh, generate public private keys on uh, for a Mac, uh, or do uh, a review of my Docker, uh, intro to Docker video on Winlog now, and it gives instructions on how to do that as well. But it's fairly simple with Putty Gen. You just do this, this whole you know, generate the key kind of thing, and then you would have this this uh, public key here that I would just simply copy and paste this into um, this box here. And once I have that, I would choose my subscription that I want to use. It says I have two MSDM subscriptions. I would pick that, and then I'd create a new resource group. Um, test group or demo group, whatever you want to call it, pick a region and go to the next one. And then you would pick your orchestration, DCOS or Swarm. 
and then click OK and then say this is where you, you, you set the size. You have master count, one, three, or five. And then the agent count, depending on the size of the cluster you want to run from one to 100 agents. So it's going to actually create a VM scale set that will be with that number of VMs provisioned in that scale set. So you can add or remove them later on after you provision this. So this, you're not locked into whatever number you put in here. Typically two it would be a cluster. One's really not a cluster, but you can go to 100, up to 100, I think. So you can deploy some rather large clusters with this, so two. And then you give it a DNS prefix, so I just do a test cluster. Now that th this would go about deploying this, and you review and you click OK, and it would go about deploying this through the portal. The other way to do this, I'm not actually going to do it here. I'm actually going to do it through the command line, but that's how you do it in the portal. It's very easy to do the portal. It's easy to do it in the CLI as well. So to do it in the CLI, the, the way I, I, I like to do this is to use Azure Resource Manager templates. So instead of uh, deploying, uh, going through the portal and do this, I could script this out if I wanted to and just use the Azure CLI. So you'd need to download and install the Azure CLI. Just Google Azure CLI and uh, download the, that and install it on your local machine. And uh, once you have that, you can get the Azure uh, uh, parameters template. So this is the this is the actual Azure Resource Manager template that you can uh, that is really what Azure is using under the hood to, to build those views on the blade when you're configuring it. So you can go through this and you can kind of see all the values that are possible inside of this template. So um, here. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm, I can go through and set my agent count. Uh, I'm, we're going to look at the, the, the parameters file here. So it says 1 to 100. I select the size of the, the VM that I want, uh, the Linux Azure uh, admin name. Uh, don't want to use DCOS or Swarm. Um, and then the master count, 1, 3, or 5. So those are all the same options we saw inside of the portal as well. So when you come back over here, to the Azure deploy um, JSON, this is where you actually provide the answers for it. Now, here's what I here's where you would deploy the the DNS prefix name. This becomes important later on. So whenever you go to actually deploy this cluster, you need to give it a DNS prefix because it's going to build a, U, a URL for you. So if I wanted to do this one, I would do swarm. I'm gonna call it swarm um, demo two dash cluster uh, and that will give be the DNS prefix so it would be like swarm demo two dash cluster dot uh, south central dot app on dot azure dot com or what I can't remember exactly what it is but it we can get that but that's going to be the DNS uh, unique DNS for my particular instance Azure container services running and I've just got I'm going to do a small deployment here I could do an agent count of one two three and a master count of uh, one three or five. And then this is where I would paste in my uh, SSH key is in this, this value here. And once I have this configured, um, I can save it and then I can run a command to actually go ahead and run this particular instance here. So I've actually got all this configured right here. The commands I just copy so I can copy and paste these commands into my CLI. So I'm going to launch this CLI here and I'm going to go to my desktop and then go to the folder that I have these already deployed in. Now, you can see here, there's my Azure uh, deploy uh, .json, which is the Azure Resource Manager template. And then this is my Azure deploy parameters, which has the answers for that particular uh, file uh, template right here. So if I come over here, typically, if you've never done this, you would do Azure login. But since I've already logged in for this particular box, what this will do is it'll give you a, a URL where you would punch in a, uh, a number and it would register whatever device you're running the Azure CLI on with Azure so that you can actually run commands against uh, Azure from the device. Since I've already done that, I don't need to do it again. So if you've never done it before, do Azure.logon and then first log on that way. Um, the next thing that you'd want to do is once you have this deployed, you would want to paste in or this command. So if you, what, what, what this is going to do is it's actually going to create a, a resource group on Azure. And so I'm going to give it a new name. I'm going to call it swarm uh, to cluster. I'm going to say 
So this is using the Azure CLI group create, and it's going to create a resource management group called Swarm2 Cluster on Azure, and then tell it the region. I'm going to use South Central US, and then I'm going to tell it what template I want to use for the uh, Azure Resource Manager, and then I'm going to tell it what parameters to use, which is this one right here. So this command uh, will actually invoke the creation of Azure Container Services using an Azure Resource Manager template. So if I run this, it's going to start running that on Azure containers on Azure. It usually takes a few minutes for this to build. And so I'm going to, I'm going to flip back over to the portal to show you where it's actually creating this, but it won't be ready for another 10 or 15 minutes, depending on how busy the deployment servers on Azure are. But I do already have some provisions so we can continue with our demo. So let's go back over to my portal. And if I click back over here on my resources, you can go, you can see there that this one right, this is the one I just created on uh, this particular instance of Azure Container Services. And there's that test group I created a, a minute ago as well. So for our, for our demos, though, I'm going to use these two uh, instances, DC OS cluster and this uh, Swarm uh, cluster to do the, the demos going forward. So that's how you would actually go about creating one. You can use the Azure, uh, Azure command line, or you can do it through the portal. If, it, if you're just getting familiar with Azure Container Services and you've never used Azure Command Line or Azure Resource Manager, stick to the portal until you're comfortable with the parameters that you need to do. And then you might want to use the the, the uh, Azure Resource Manager templates and the command line. I started the, using the, the portal, but I, I prefer the, the command line now but simply just it's simply because it's simple, it's easy to do. Uh, I think it's a lot easier than going to the temp, the portal to do all that. Once you have it, you can get, uh, get what you need. So now that we've got our, now that we've got our uh, clusters up and running, I want to actually connect these and start using them. And, uh, so that you can actually see what's going on. So I'm going to connect to my swarm portal, uh, first and, uh, show you how to do this. So now I have my SSH client launched. Now to do this, um, I would need to get the name of this particular, um, uh, this instance on, uh, uh, Azure right here. So I'm going to need this, the name of this resource group. And to do that, you can use the Azure CLI, or you can, uh, go into the resource manager to get the name of the actual, uh, management agent that, so you can connect to it. That's the DNS name so that the, it will, so you can connect your SSH client to it. So I'm going to run. Uh, Azure, uh, Ace, Azure ACS, Azure ACS is the, uh, the subgroup under the Azure CLI for doing Azure command line. And this is, this gives you a whole lot of stuff for doing stuff with Azure container services and the Azure command line. So if I go Azure ACS list, and then I tell, tell to use swarm cluster, it's going to give me the, the configuration for that particular, uh, cluster. Now here's the, uh, the the fully qualified domain name that I need you to use to connect to this particular instance of Azure Container Services. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to come down here to um, uh, Putty and paste it into this host name right here. Now notice that this is using port 2200. Port 2200 is the port that's configured for our Azure Container Services to use. And lastly, what I need to do is I need to set up an SSH tunnel. There's, and what I've already done here is I've done a local port for it. So I'd say, what's my local port? Um, 22235 right here. And that's going to forward my local port to the remote port on the uh, 127.0.0.1 or localhost 2375. Now that is the actual docker engine listening on azure on the master agent so it's going to be listening on that port so this can take all the traffic from my local port 22375 and forward that to 2375 on azure since i've already got that configured i don't need to reconfigure it and the last thing i need to do is point my um, off to that pri to my private key which i already have it set out i already have that set it's a ppk file that was generated by putty gen so if i wanted to save this off with putty gen I saved the uh, save the private key, um, and uh, you would just generate a PPK file and then point Putty to that PPK file to tell it to use that private key file. And once you have that up and running, um, 
you just you you supply the name that you provided to either the Azure Resource Manager or the uh, the portal, and then it's connected with that port forwarded. So I've got this uh, CLI up right here, and now I can start running Docker commands against that instance of Swarm. So if I go Docker, I have to specify host, and I'm going to use my local host here on that port I forwarded. And if I do a PS dash A, I don't have anything actually running on there, but this will show you that I just executed a command on Azure Container Services by specifying the host, uh, my local host, but it forwarded that command to Azure Container Services. So if I did maybe images, it would show you a list of images. Since this is a brand new instance of Azure Container Services uh, up and running, uh, I don't have any images deployed to it or I don't have any uh, containers running on it. So uh, I'll, I'm going to do a demo of that later on with, uh, with Swarm, but just to let you know that it is up and running, you can see that I'm actually running Docker commands. Now let's disconnect from this one and connect to DCOS, and then I'm going to uh, pull that up and show you how it looks and uh, through this. So I'm going to close uh, close this instance of Azure Container Services, and let's relaunch um, Putty. And, uh, oops, right. there's my putty folder and launch putty again. And using that same instance here, I'm going to use, let's go over to the portal and get this DCOS cluster. Okay. And I'm going to paste that into and to get the, the master agent here for this one. And uh, here's the master agent for this DCOS cluster. Now DCOS, uh, I have to do a different port forward for it because it's actually doing, it's, gonna, it's running services on a different port. So to do that, I'm going to remove that, paste in the one for uh, DCOS, and then I'm going to set up another tunnel for this one, what I need to do though is port for another port to um, to port 80 on the other end because this has a UI for doing things through. So if I go dot zero dot zero dot one port 80, um, that's the local host port for the actual DCOS instance that I've already got up and running. And I'm going to add this. So I'm going to connect a local host port 8000 on my browser and that will forward all the traffic over an SSH tunnel to the 127.0.0.1 or the local host on the other end which is the management portal for my DCOS instance and everything else should be the same I don't uh, since I use the same PPK uh, file to to generate this one with uh, and uh, used the session to point to the DCOS demo I'm going to open this up and connect to it log in as blaze and now I have port um, 8000 forwarded to the other end so let's go to uh, my local host and then go to port 8000 and this should launch DCOS and this is the portal for uh, DCOS it gives you a graphical user interface as well as a CLI and you can download and install the CLI here and you can read the documentation now to show you what's going on with this um, there's a number of tasks that two nodes that are configured for this particular instance of uh, DCOS. It, this is the, the the private side, and this is the public side. So the public facing ones are the ones that are actually uh, running there. And you can click over here. You see services that are running on Marathon is the what you actually use to deploy things on um, on on this in, on this instance of Azure Container uh, Services using DCOS. If you click on Universe, this is where you can actually download and install uh, con download and install container packages. However, um, I'm going to go ahead and search for Nginx because this is what I'm going to use. I'm actually going to deploy something right here. If I click Install, this will install the Nginx package. And uh, once it's installed, actually what it's doing is it, it creates an instance of Nginx for you. However, it's not properly configured to run. So to do that, I need to go over to Marathon to do to uh, configure this instance of uh, nginx i just deployed that a second ago so to actually deploy this correctly what i need to do is go over here to create application and i'm going to call this you know just some website and i'm going to i'm going to flip over to 
you can come over, you can go to the wizard here and yeah, configure all of this uh, manually, or you can flip over to JSON mode and use a template, which I'm going I'm to use a JSON template here simply because I, it, for, for the sake of time, um, I've already configured all of these parameters using this. So if I flip back over to um, JSON mode, off of JSON mode, you can see here it, it, it pre-populated all of these, uh, the various fields with um, stuff from that JSON template. So I, I'm, so if I flip back over to the JSON mode, it's going to look something like this. I'm a, so that one, you can see here that I have port 80, host port 80, and that's what I really wanted here so that I can have the right port configured for this particular instance of uh, Eng Nginx. I'm going to call this one website, and I'm going to create the application. And this one's going to take a second to deploy. I only gave it uh, 96 megabytes of RAM. Um, now, once I have that up and running uh, with this particular website on Marathon, I've deployed it using Marathon, which is actually using Mesos under the hood. I can flip back over to DCOS and look at uh, metrics as far as memory, disk, uh, everything's up and running. You can see here on my nodes, I've got stuff running on my nodes. Um, and it's just, it's giving me live uh, telemetry coming back from my environment. So DCOS provides a lot more uh, visual as well as uh, analytics that you can get right out of the box with DCOS that you don't otherwise get with Swarm. So this is intended to be run on a large scale environment so you can have a lot of visibility into your environment running this. So uh, you can see a very, very nice looking uh, dashboard and services all running on site on this particular instance of DCOS. Now to show you that uh, that actual website's up and running, I'm going to come back over here and actually get my agent side and get my DCOS agent. And since I told that to run on port 80, you, we should see a, uh, uh, an Nginx screen configured. Yeah, this is just the entry page for Nginx. So that's what I just deployed on Azure Container Services using Marathon, that ma that Marathon uh, JSON template. And it just pre-configured uh, that it deployed Nginx to a container and then uh, provi uh, provisioned that container on DCOS and then spun it up running on DCOS. Now with DCOS, you can, you can deploy a multiplicity of containers very easily. So I could tell it, I want to run uh, 100 containers and it would it would spawn 100 containers all of them with this from the same template so it's designed to give you rapid scalability and if I want to scale those back that's easy to do as well so there's all that functionality built into marathon if you come back here you can go to uh, scale and you can tell it I want to scale up or scale down uh, depending on whatever you're doing so there, there's a lot you can do within marathon and then there's also a complete there's the CLI side of things this is a very rich environment for doing large-scale deployments though so that's this is DCOS I want to flip back over and do a, uh, another quick demo on uh, Swarm though to show you how you would deploy to uh, Swarm using uh, uh, some containers that I have running that I've built locally. So to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to close out, uh, uh, DCOS here, and I'm going to reconnect putty back to the, the swarm cluster that I had just created. Um, let's go ahead and create a new session here and let's reconfigure this guy to use my swarm cluster. So I'm going to grab that again, and then I'm going to paste it into my host here. And that's going to give me access to my swarm cluster. I'm going to log in as Blaze, which is me. And now, I'm, now I've got SHH tunnel into my swarm cluster that's running Docker Swarm instead of DCOS. Now, for this demo, I want to, I want to run uh, something that I have already built for this. I'm going to use Docker Compose to to run um, a demo here. So I'm going to go to my Compose folder. And I have here a simple app that I've uh, built that has a database container and an app container. And these have uh, Docker build scripts in them. I'm not going to go into the details. If you want to, this is the same app I did for my demo on uh, Docker 
intro to Docker. So if you want to go back and look at the details of how, what that's actually doing, you can go into the, my, my previous webinar and look at uh, the details of the apps that are, I've already got built here. So all I did is I reprovisioned it for this for this particular demo. And so to do this, I'm going to do Docker dash H. I'm going to connect to my the same port that I configured a minute ago. Uh, 375, that's my local port forwarded to um, Docker on the other end running on 2375. And then I'm going to um, I'm actually going to use Docker Compose. And then I'm going to call Docker Compose up. Now, uh, I'm telling Docker Compose to use this Docker Compose YAML file here to build and and run containers on the Azure Container Services running on uh, the Docker Swarm running on the Azure Container Services on the other end of this SSH tunnel. So once this it's going to build these uh, containers. See, it's uh, using Docker build. And then once it builds them, it's actually going to uh, you know, run this. So I, I'm going to have to give this a minute to do so. Um, it's actually downloading the containers from Docker Hub. And the containers themselves are already using build scripts using uh, uh, to install all of the libraries into these uh, various containers and also provision the database that is running. So this is completely automated with um, Docker. Now you can do automation with DCOS as well. DCOS uh, this, uh, command line has its own uh, flavor of doing various things with Docker containers. Uh, so if you want to do that, you could review the documentation right there in DCOS, click that, that link, and then it would actually go about building those containers out. Let's give this a minute to deploy. And uh, and look at the YAML file that we were looking at a minute ago. Show you what I'm actually doing here. So I have the the database YAML defined right here, which is the uh, setting a password to password one. And then this app connects to that database right here. And then uh, it's the it's called airports and it uses the password password warn. This is the ports, and then I'm exposing port 8080. So what I'm going to do as soon as this app deploys is I'm going to pull up my instance of Azure Container Services running Swarm and I'm going to point that that fully qualified domain name with port 8080 and then pull up my app uh, there. Let's go back down here and check on the status of this. Here it's actually pulling all of the uh, the node modules. This is the Node.js uh, app, and it's provisioning that application uh, using uh, Azure uh, Container Services. And this is provisioning the MySQL database right now. So building that container. Um, I probably should have run this to make sure those containers were already cached, but I created this right before I ran the demo, so it would be up and running when I had this running. So, pulls complete. And they're both creating the uh, databases, and they're up and running now. So it looks like we're good to go. So let's open up a new window here for the command line. And go to desktop and then go to my demo. There it is. And now I'm going to um, run, this is the folder I was working in. I'm going to run Azure ACS list and uh, use this cluster for swarm cluster to get that fully qualified domain. Oops, I can't spell Azure. For my agent side, this is with all the nodes that I'm running. So I'm gonna take this right here, come back over here to my browser and drop that URL, that, that uh, fully qualified domain and then add port 8080 because I was port forwarding port 8080 to port 80 in the container. And this is my little app. 
so it's using Google Maps and is querying a database um, under that's querying that MySQL database that I deployed for um, app for airport locations based on geolocations and the, what's contained within the parameters of this particular view. This map here is um, and as I drag it, it just issues new commands to find airports located within the the new uh, lat long you know, boundaries that are, are visible on the map. So if I zoom out, it's, it queries even more uh, uh, locations for airports. And these are all the locations in that database that I have. So it just does uh, you know, greater than, less than, and queries that database, and then drops a pin on to the, uh, to the map here for wherever there is a airport located. So click on that and uh, it will show you Eric Elkin Randolph County Jenkins Randolph Airport in somewhere in West Virginia. So that's all this is doing is a simple little app, but it does demonstrate that I'm actually running this on Azure Container Services using a node container with a MySQL container for the database. So what we've done today is we've actually deployed a container. We've, we've set up a, an instance of Azure Container Services for DCOS. We've set up an instance for Azure uh, for Swarm, and we've deployed containers to DCOS, and we've deployed containers to uh, Swarm, Swarm as well. And in both instances, we you've seen that you can actually run containers in both of these running Azure Container Services. So, what where would we go from here? Um, on containers on Azure, you actually have a lot of options, in which we've talked about already. We there in the Azure marketplace, you have Clear OS, Rancher OS, and, and Docker Data Center, and a bunch you pre-configured with Docker. If, if, if the Azure Container Services that is running for some reason doesn't work, there are other ways to run containers on Azure using one of these other options. However, they don't have the tight integration with Azure Container Services that you would get with the CLI and what have you. So Azure Container Services gives you that that you wouldn't otherwise get with one of these uh these other op options for running containers on Azure. You can also customize it and build out your own VM, but the, the, the difference is, is you're responsible for managing these while Azure Container Services, Microsoft is gonna help you out there. So those are some of the other options for that. So now that we've gone through this demo, I wanted to take some time to answer questions. So if you guys had any other questions, um, uh, I'm, I'll gladly fill those and maybe we can go through those. So if you, if you have them, please, uh, uh, please feel free to ask. If using ACS, um, are you responsible for patching or updating the OS? Typically, Microsoft handles that for you. I, I think that uh, that's the only question I see there. You showed using Nginx for, for from Marathon. What role does Nginx play? Nginx was actually the... Uh, uh, the container nginx doesn't play any role into that uh into that issue it doesn't play any there was no role that nginx plays in nginx was actually the uh the, what was running inside of the container so what i did is i downloaded the, the nginx image uh from docker in uh, dcos and then i said deploy this nginx container on dcos so dcos was actually orchestrating all that for me and once i pulled up uh, Nginx, what we were doing is we were actually hitting the web server that was running inside of that uh, that container. Well, if you guys don't have any more questions, I'll uh, I appreciate your time, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, close this out, and uh, we'll have a, a recording of this available on uh, Wintelect as. Uh, uh, as soon as we can get that up there, it'll be on the Dev Center, so you can log on to uh, wintelect.com and review this if you have uh, um, if you have any other questions. Feel free to email me at uh, bsteward at wintelect.com, and uh, you can also go out there and uh, uh, look for this recording later on, and then also register for the Windows Container uh, Service, the Windows uh, Server 2016 while you're out there on Azure, I'm sorry, on wintelect.com, and you can uh, sign up for that webinar. So it's been a pleasure. I appreciate everybody that for your attention, and uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. We had one other question come in. It was, uh, I'm new to Docker coming from, um, I'll go ahead and answer this question. 
I'm new to Docker coming from lob.net 4.5.2. What are some of the use cases for creating Docker containers in my world? Well, with uh, a lot of bit, with .NET, uh, with the new .NET Core, you can actually use Docker to deploy uh, containers uh, using .NET Core on Windows containers or, or even on Linux containers using .NET applications running in a container that way. So that's one way to do that as well. Um, Here's another question that's come in. If using AC, uh, I already answered that one, sorry. What would you say the key differences between ACS and AWS are, are for container solutions? Um, that's a good question. Um, the the difference is, is ACS has more, Azure Container Services has tighter uh, integration with the, with the actual do, the, the environments that it's deploying. So Azure, uh, and decided that they wanted to have a closer relationship with Docker or DCOS whenever you deploy uh, containers as a services on the, the particular environment. So they worked with those teams to deploy it rather than do it themselves. AWS, they wanted to have tighter integration with their own environment. So what they did then is they provided uh, ways to use AWS templates uh, for deploying containers rather than using something like uh, Docker Compose or using the DCOS to for container orchestration. So their container orchestration is has tighter integration with the uh, AWS ecosystem. So uh, this is a, a good a, kind of a, a difficulty whenever you go to AWS because you kind of have to redo everything on AWS to make it run there because you have to use their orchestration engine to do it. So you have almost have to do things twice if you're doing AWS with Azure Container Services. You don't have to do that if you're running DCOS on your environment and your data center or development. You can do it as in the cloud as well. Same thing with uh, Docker Swarm. Let's see if there's any other questions that have come in. How do you run a batch job I, a, a, a console application in a container as a service? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Um, but how do you run a batch job for a console application and a container as a service? No, with a container as a service using Docker Swarm, uh, you can script that using, uh, you can connect it, connect to it using SSH, and then you can actually run some kind of uh, batch job using Docker Compose or Docker Build or anything that you could otherwise script using uh, uh, the Docker commands to run a batch job there. You, uh, or you can do the same thing on a, on a Mac or a Linux environment as well. You can connect to the Azure Container Services using SSH and then issue Docker commands inside of your batch job to deploy com uh, components that way. So what you saw me do a minute ago using the YAML file was a complete automated build of an application that you could use that same script in dev, production, and QA. Uh, so uh, very easy to do there. Um, another, another question came in. Uh, can you deploy... Uh, things like SQL Server. Um, there, Microsoft did a demo of SQL Server uh, at at Ignite back in the the summer, showing that you could actually deploy SQL Server into a container. Now, SQL Server itself, as of right now, doesn't have that, but it's forthcoming. However, other databases do run in uh, uh, containers. Like I just deployed a MySQL into a container. You can run NoSQL, or you can run other things like Postgre or other open source databases inside of uh, containers as well. Let's see what we got here. Uh, see if anything else has come in here. IIS is the containers. Many thanks. Uh, any other questions? Okay, I think that's the end of the. Our, our, all examples on Linux, any offerings from Docker for Windows in the future? Yes, uh, that's what I was discussing a moment ago. Uh, we're gonna do a complete demo of that, uh, a webinar based on Windows uh, containers coming up. It's a newer technology inside of Windows Server 2016 that you can use, and also uh, there's ways to do that on Docker. I was using, you're right, I was using all Linux-based stuff, but in the future there was, actually right now, you can actually go out and get Server 2016 and start deploying uh, Windows and Hyper-V containers that will run Windows containers uh, uh, on that platform as well. Let's see if there's any other questions that have come in. Okay, I think that's it for uh, for for questions. Um, nothing.
nothing new. So thank you guys for your attendance and it's a uh, new and I respect your time and uh, want to go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks for attending.